great tempestuous evening and namaste from india and to all the beautiful fire souls across the globe who are watching and being with us to them my lovely bravo gamashova hola bonjour tido dobro popolatne dobro doshli i supriya kumar velan international speaker communication and leadership coach soft skill trainer and a global keynote speaker head of training learning development iiu welcome you all to our nep that is is national education policy 2020 webinar series day 1 and the topic is framework of nep organized by none other than iiu international internship university so folks well it's a matter that everybody today knows about iiu but still let me apprise you about international internship university which is a leading virtual education system and global brand confederation and is the most renowned and trusted worldwide well reputed in delivering innovative programs iiu is committed to providing highest quality education to all the learners of the globe regardless of social or economic background and providing access to more than 1000 plus courses don't you think it's great and also to internships to their e learners across the globe with the help of its committed experienced and high caliber global educators and in a short span of time iiu has spread its wings in 195 countries and six continents under the strong leadership of its visionary founder who is none other than mr piyush pandit sir a committed and inspiring social activist a passionate educationist from the last two decades providing education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds piyush pandit has publicized the world education policy that is wep one education one foundation and one world iiu has taken the initiative to reach every learner in rural as well as urban areas through the vidyanjali project an initiative by the ministry of education government of india to provide higher education as well as vocational training along with internship opportunities so iie is the revolution in education today 4th august is a big day folks we are going to launch our nep web series and today is the day one and with we are having an amazing and insightful topic that is framework of nep we all know nep 2020 was released on 29 july 2020 in india our motherland as per the policy the aim is to have an education system by 2040 that is second to none with equitable access to the highest quality education for all the learners regardless of social or economic background the nep framework which we are going to talk today is to provide the students as well as the society that's most important our society a set of plan of what students have to learn and are expected to achieve at the end of their secondary schooling the main aim of the frameworks are if i list it it will be too long so i am taking the cut chart to fulfill the needs of the students fulfill the needs of our india and fulfill the needs of everyone who are in the day process to make it is the best one now 
to begin this fabulous, fantabulous, and insightful and impactful journey of today, 4th August. We have two brilliant and eminent speakers present with us, and it's my great privilege. And I would like to invite my first great speaker, Dr. Snigda Gadam. She needs no introduction in today's scenario, but still, she is the Chief Operating Officer, Director, Academics, Global International Internship University, President of IIU Research Center of India, Chief Editor, Revolution E-Magazine IIU, Principal of Seva Southern Society, English Medium School, Mumbai, and what not, Dr. Snegna, a keynote speaker, panelist, social worker, a writer, and a blogger. So Dr. Snegda, I welcome you all on this beautiful and wonderful platform. The stage is all yours to rock on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Supriya, for the wonderful introduction. Good evening from India. Namaste. Myself, Dr. Snegda Kadao. It's a great initiative by the founder of International Internship University, Mr. Piyush Pandit Sir, to have a webinar series on National Education Policy 2020, along with 60 plus Indian educationists. Heartfelt gratitude, sir. National Education Policy is indeed a monumental step for the education industry. The NEP 2020 spelled out education as being fundamental to human development and the high quality learning opportunities that the nation must provide to its young minds to prepare them for the future. The policy is a forward looking document and heralds the future where learning is fun, engaging and results in real world application. The NEP 2020 introduced with the purpose of bringing about part breaking reforms in the Indian education system and is a blueprint for an Atmanirbhar India. It is poised to create opportunities for multidisciplinary and holistic learning environment and make education access to all. Really, indeed a wonderful initiative by International Internship University. Yes, so the NEP webinar series will be from 4th August to 29th August by well-known Indian educationist. Change is the end result of all the true learning. The NEP 2020 is the first education policy of the 21st century and replaces the 34 year old National Policy on Education 1986. The new education policy was released under the government of India's Ministry of Human Resource Development on 30th July 2020, the first education policy to be released in the last 34 years in India. It built on the fund foundational pillars of access, equity, quality, affordability, accountability. NEP policy is aligned to the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. It aims to transform India into a vibrant knowledge society and global knowledge superpower by making both school and college education more holistic, flexible, multidisciplinary, suited to 21st century needs and aimed at bringing out the unique capabilities of each student. The motto of NEP is to educate, encourage, and enlighten. The aim of the policy is to prepare the children of India with 21st century skills. NEP is founded on the three pillars, research, innovation, and quality, with the objective of developing India into a knowledge of super power. NEP is a comprehensive frame is a comprehensive framework to guide the development of education in the country. As a policy of education, it not only guides the development of education but also provides direction for regulating and promoting education. The education policy covers education at all the stages, including early childhood care and education, school education, 
higher education, teacher education, and vocational education. Now let's have a look on what are the key highlights of NEP. Public spending on education by the states and the center has been increased to 6% of the gross domestic product. The Ministry of Human Resource Development has been renamed as the Ministry of Education. There will be no rigid separation between arts and science, academic and vocational, curricular and extracurricular streams. Education of gifted children will be looked into. The establishment of gen gender inclusion fund. NEP will bring new pedagogy and curriculum for school education, ensuring universal access at all levels of school education from preschool to secondary. NEP will support innovative education centers to bring back dropouts into the mainstream, tracking of students and their learning levels, facilitating multiple pathways to learning involving both formal and non-educational and education modes. Now, here I would like to add, though we have the RTE, Right to Education Act, practically it is not possible to bring back all the children to mainstream. So certainly this NEP will be the revolutionary step so that all the children, all the learners will, the, will be the part of the curriculum. Again, it will emphasize on open school for classes third, five and eight through NIOS, state open schools, secondary education programs equivalent to grade 10 and 12, vocational courses, adult literacy, life enrichment programs are some of the proposed way for achieving this. About two crores out of school children will be brought back into the mainstream under NAP. The existing educational structure of 10 plus two years has been redesigned to three plus two plus three plus three plus four years. Now we will have a look into the individual stage. The very first stage, that is foundational stage, it will be of total five years. Three years at an Anganwadi, Balvatika, preschool, play school for the children in the age group of three to six years with multi-level play and activity-based learning. Two years in class one and two for the children in the age group of six to eight with multi-level play and again activity-based learning. So NEP will emphasize mainly on activity-based learning. Attaining foundational literacy and numeracy. Recognizing foundational literacy and numeracy as an urgent and necessary prerequisite to learning. NEP 2020 calls for a setting up of a national mission on a foundational literacy and numeracy by MHRD. States will prepare an implementation plan for attaining universal foundational literacy and numeracy in all the primary schools for all learners by grade three by 2025. Herein there is one wonderful thing that center is not or central government is not imposing any rules or regulations, but every state can take their own decision for the progress of foundation learning. A national book promotion policy is to be formulated. Now preparatory stage, it will be for total three years for classes third to five. The children in this age group will be eight to 10 years. Activity-based learning and interactive classroom learning. Middle stage, it will be of total three years. It is for grade six to eight. The children in the age group will be 11 to 14 years. Now here in experiential learning in science, mathematics, social science, arts, and humanities. Secondary stage, a very, very important stage. It will be for total four years. It's for classes nine to 12. The children of the age group, 14 to 18 years approximately. It will mainly emphasize on multidisciplinary study, students' choice of subjects and critical thinking. Because still today in India, we can find that there are many, uh, like the CBSC and ICC schools, they are giving the option to the children for the subject selection. But when it comes to the state board schools, the children do not get that option. Whichever subjects are there in the curriculum, 
whatever subjects are there in the state curriculum, students have to opt only for those subjects. Higher education. Postgraduate program will have a duration of one to two years. There will be no MPhil programs. In 15 years, the college affiliation system will be gradually phased out. Every college will develop into either a constituent college of, or a university into an autonomous degree granting institution. I think this is a really very, very important point. There will be a new umbrella regulatory body for all higher education courses, except for legal and medical courses. An academic bank of credit will be established to facilitate smoother transfer between the institutions. Else the children have to struggle a lot when they shift from one state to the other state. There are so many, um, like, you know, administrative processes are involved into that. All standalone technical universities, legal universities, agricultural universities, and health science universities will become multidisciplinary institutions. Now, the very first and important framework which uh, emphasize on holistic multidisciplinary education. The policy envisages broad-based multidisciplinary holistic undergraduate education with flexible curricula, create a combinations of the subjects, integration of the vocal education and multiple entry and exit points with appropriate certification. At present, when the child goes for the stream selection, either a child can go for arts, science, commerce, or maybe again, a medical or engineering. But the NEP, the revolutionary NEP, a child can go for music as well as engineering together. I know indeed it's going to be a bit difficult task for the institutions to uh, give so many options to the children, but certainly every state government will work on that. UG education can be of three or four years with multiple exit options and appropriate certification within this period. Multidisciplinary education and research universities at par with IITs, IIMs to be set out as a model of best multidisciplinary education of global standards in the country. See, at present in India, there are certain institutions or uh, certain um, organizations, IIT, IIM, like people give only the importance to that. But NEP will certainly focus on to develop or to set up the models wherein the children can take the education. The National Research Foundation will be created as an apex body for fostering strong research culture and building research capacity across higher education. So the education will be research-based education. Languages. No language will be imposed on any state. Up to class five and preferably till class eight, the mother tongue will be the medium of instruction as far as possible in both private and public schools. Even the ICSC and CBSC schools need to make the changes as per this NEP methodology. Hindi, Marathi, Gujarati, uh, Tamil, uh, the subjects will be, the languages will be as per the choice of the state government. There will be three language system with language chosen by the state, region and the students. Of the three languages, two should be native languages of India. Sanskrit will be offered at all levels of school and higher education. Other classical languages will be made available mostly as online modules. Foreign languages will be offered from the secondary level onwards. Promotion of Indian languages. To ensure the preservation, growth, and vibrancy of all the Indian languages, NEP recommends setting an Indian Institute of Translation and Interpretation. National Institute for Pali, Persian, Prakrit, Strengthening of Sanskrit and All Languages Department in HEIS to use mother tongue local language as a medium of instruction in more HEI programs. Internationalization of education will be facilitated through both institutional collaboration, student and faculty mobility, allowing entry of top world-ranked universities to open campuses in our countries. Now let's have a look at the assessment reforms. Uh, at present, uh, every state or uh, every board of schools, whether it is a state board or CBSC board or ICC board, they have a fixed assessment pattern. 
right? But NEP will envisages a shift from summative assessment to regular and formative assessment. We can call it as CCE, that is continuous comprehensive valuation, which will be done on a regular basis. It will be more competency based, promotes learning and development, test higher order skills such as analysis, critical thinking, and conceptual clarity. The assessment will not be only on the textual content. All students will take school examination in grade three, five, and eight, which will be conducted by the appropriate authority. Board exams for grade 10 and 10, 12 will be continued, but redesigned with the holistic development as the aim. Now let's have a look uh, what will be the structure of the board exams. The board exams for grade 10 and grade 12 will be redesigned to test core competencies rather than memorization of the facts. Because these days we have been seen that the children are memorizing the uh, answers, question answers, even in the mathematics, they're learning the sums, they're learning the theorems, they're learning the algorithms. So uh, certainly the NEP will bring a change into this. Uh, they will be redesigned to be a easier for the students. Students will be permitted to take the exams twice. There may be modular or semester wise board exams. There may be exams for different levels of difficulty. Why this point has to be added in the NEP? According to me, every child is having a different level of understanding. So we cannot have the same kind of question paper for all the students. Some students uh, may, uh, like, you know, they may have the IQ level uh, very low. So they cannot write the paper which the child, which has been written for the child with the higher IQ level. So the uh, question papers to be made as per the different levels of the difficulty. Objective and descriptive type of questions may have different exams. At present, if you will see the pattern of the question paper, the initial questions are the objective type, maybe fill in the blanks, MCQ, match the pair, etc., odd man out. And last part of the question paper is always scientific reasons, um, describe in brief. So both the type of questions are included in the same question paper, but certainly this pattern will be changed. A modular model, rather than just one board, may be in place by 2023 school education. So by the year 2030, the universalization of education will be implemented from age three to class 10. Key assessments will be conducted, as I just uh, told you, for classes third, fifth, and eighth. Students can choose subjects, especially in the secondary schools, which will include arts, craft, vocational subjects, physical, physical education. So we cannot impose on the students the subjects like math, science, which they really feel very, very difficult. So by the year 2025, the national mission on foundational literacy and numeracy will ensure that the basic skills are imbibed by the class three level from class six coding and vocational skill training will be integrated into the curriculum which is very very important i feel uh, after the pandemic of covid 19 we all have understood how important is technology in the education indian knowledge values culture including indigenous and tribal knowledge will be integrated into the curriculum because I feel whatever uh, topics are included into the history, the um, curriculum is uh, very vast. The children are knowing the history of the uh, other parts of the world, but they do not know what is the tribal culture of the India or any particular state of India. There will be a new accreditation framework for schools. There will be an independent authority for the regulation of both private and public sectors. The undergraduate education, the undergraduate degrees will have a duration of four years. At present, we have a structure of three years, so it will change to four years. Undergraduate degrees will be multidisciplinary, holistic, and flexible. There will be multiple exit options for appropriate certification at each exit point, such as certificate after completion of one year in a vocational or professional field, diploma after two years, bachelor's degree after three years. Students completing the four-year degree program can obtain a degree with research if the research subject is within the area of the study. 
Now, in our OS and open state schools, it's this is very very important because though we have the BMC schools or we have aided schools in India, wherein we are providing a uh, free education to the children, there are many many students, street children, shelter homes, orphanages who are deprived of education even in today's scenario. So, NIOS and open state schools is very very important in India. So uh, the education offered by them will be equivalent to the grade three, five, and eight of the formal schooling system. Secondary school programs can be offered that are equivalent to grade ten and twelve. Open and distance learning. Yes, in India we have started with that. Uh, Mumbai University itself is having its open and distance learning uh, department, and there are many other universities which have come up with that. A uh, major such as online courses, digital. repositories funding for research improved student services credit based recognition of moocs etc will be taken into ensure it is at par with the higher quality in class programs equitable and inclusive education this is again very very important the right to education act all, already emphasizes on that inclusive education is very very important the children with the uh, physical disabilities they are uh, like you know challenge children they should be included into the mainstream with all other the students that will certainly help to have their better development so nep aims to ensure that no child lose any opportunity to learn and excel because of the circumstances of birth or a background special emphasis will be given on socially and economically disadvantaged groups which include gender socio culture geographical identities and disabilities this includes setting up of gender inclusion fund and also special education zones for disadvantaged region and groups children with disabilities will be enabled to fully participate in the regular schooling process from the foundational stage to higher education with the support of educators with cross disability training resource center accommodations assistive devices appropriate technology based tools other support mechanisms tailored to suit their needs but here in government should provide all the schools with this kind of support because till today hardly 10% of the schools in india have all of these facilities available many of the schools even do not have the counseling and special education department so certainly we look forward towards the, uh, like for the all these kind of support every state district will be encouraged to establish bal bhavans as a special day time boarding school to participate in art related career related and play related activities these bal bhavans of the various states they can have the inter state competition so which, which will certainly motivate the students to learn in a better way free school infrastructure can be used as a samajik chetan kendras online education and digital education i think it is a uh, already we have taken the step um uh, i should not say pandemic uh, was a please to us but yes it was a blessing for this particular uh, reason because 80% of the students of the india have taken the advantage of online and digital education during the tough times of the pandemic a comprehensive set of recommendations for promoting online education consequent to the recent rise in epidemics pandemics in order to ensure preparedness with alternative modes of quality education whenever and wherever traditional and in person modes of education are not possible has been covered dedicated unit for the purpose of orchestrating the building of digital extra structure so this is again very very important 20% schools in the rural areas they do not have the facility to provide online or digital education to the children so government should must take the necessary step towards that technology in education an autonomous body the national educational technology forum will be created to provide a platform for the free exchange of ideas on the use of technology to enhance learning assessment planning and administration appropriate integration of technology into all levels of education will be done to improve classroom process support teacher professional development enhance educational access for disadvantaged groups and streamline educational planning administration and management 
Now there has to be the reform in the school curricula and pedagogy. The school curricula and pedagogy will aim for a holistic development of the learners by equipping them with the key 21st century skills, reduction in curricular content to enhance essential learning and critical thinking and greater focus on experiential learning. I feel majority of the states of the India already have taken a step towards that, uh, especially the mathematics science textbooks of the schools have been reduced, the content has been reduced. So it's really a great initiative. Students will have increased flexibility and choice of subjects. There is no rigid separation between arts and science or uh, curricular and extracurricular activities or vocational or acad academic stream. Because we know that uh, when a child decides to opt arts as a stream, every individual will look upon that child is, oh yes, the child must uh, like, you know, may not be good at studies. So that's the reason he or she have not opted for science or uh, not uh, opted for medical or engineering. So I think uh, that region separation has to end at one particular point and it will certainly happen in a short span of time. Vocational education will start in schools from the grade six and will include internships. Robust teachers recruitment and career path. The teachers recruitment, which is very, very important factor. All the teachers should have clear TET examination. I feel it is really needed so that we can test on the contained knowledge of the teachers. Now, motivated, energized, capable faculty. NEP makes recommendations for motivating, energizing, building capacity of faculty through clearly defined, independent, transparent recruitment, freedom to design curricula and pedagogy, incentivizing excellence, movement, from, movement into institutional leadership. Faculty not delivering on basic norms will be held accountable. Teachers' education. Teachers' education is very, very important. A new and comprehensive national curriculum framework for teachers' education. It will be formulated by NCTE in consultation with NCERT. By 2030, the minimum degree qualification for teaching will be a four-year integrated BA degree course. At present, the BA uh, course is of two years one year full-time and two years part-time, but certainly it uh, needs to be increased. Stringent action will be taken against substandard standalone teacher education institutions. Uh, one more thing here in I would like to add on, there are many schools that who are not following the norms set by every state. The appointment of the teachers have been done in such a way that the teachers are not even qualified to uh, teach the students. The undergraduate teachers have been recruited. The teachers are not even weird. They are having the inadequate knowledge of the technology. So all these things to be taken into the consideration. Schools can be organized into the complexes or the clusters, which will be the basic unit of the governance, ensuring availability of all resources, including infrastructure, academic libraries, strong professional teacher community. Again, herein I would like to add on, the government should provide necessary support to the institutions so that they can grow well and they can provide necessary education to the children. Standard uh, setting accreditation for school education. I think uh, today we have a great personality, Dr. Rashmi Taki, ma'am. She will uh, guide us on uh, all these points, professional education, adult education, and uh, professional education. Or I would like to just brief out the outcomes of NEP. Universalization from ECCE to secondary education by 2030, aligning with SDG 4, quality education, attaining attaining foundational literacy and numeracy skills through national mission by 2025. 100% GER in preschool to secondary level by 2030. Bring back two crore dropouts, school children back to mainstream. Teachers to be prepared for assessment reforms, inclusive and equitable education, board exams to test core competencies and application of the knowledge. Every child will come out of the school adept in at least one skill. The children should not be like, you know, only for the exam purpose they should study, but when they will pass out the school, uh, at least one of the skills the child should have acquainted with. Common standards of 
learning in public and private schools so uh, as the chief operating officer of the international yes, internship yes, university ye dekh sakte ho ye dekh sakte ho ye piche sab dikhai de raha hai is a mute aap ek se sab dikhai de raha hai Yeah, uh, I would like to add on that international internship university. From three years, we are doing or we are following all the norms which are mentioned in the NEP. We emphasize we are we are the virtual university. We are providing the digital and virtual education to the learners. One thousand plus yeah. learners, right? That is already there. Yeah. thank you there was some background noise okay then mooc courses uh, the education that we provide which is already mentioned in nep we are providing it through massive open online courses internship the name of the university itself international internship university we provide internship opportunities to every learner who is been enrolled with iiu we do have the international accreditation process we do provide accreditation from international internship university so if you will look at the main features of the nep iiu is doing it from past 3 years so indeed it's a wonderful step taken by our founder to have this nep program uh, thank you so much for giving me this wonderful opportunity i feel this uh, framework of nep like you know if you give me a uh, Two to three hours. Also, I think that time won't be sufficient. And being an educator, we can just speak and speak and speak. So, thank you so much, uh, each one of you. Thank you so much, IIU, for giving me this opportunity. Namaste. Thank you, Doctor Snegda. And once again, I will say that today, the knowledge which you have given to us, you you have imbibed us. You know, we all are full with energy. and even i was listening to your uh, speech presentation i was watching just spellbound i was i was not knowing that few of the changes have been made in the curriculum pedagogy has been changed what are the implementations curriculum but you have taught everything in such a very beautiful easy manner that it should be hats off to you and one thing i really liked and loved about your presentation is what happens generally all the parents they will force you have to get this marks you have to be the top of you have to secure 100% or their uh, dreams are so much high that it will give a lot of burden a pressure to the student so that curriculum you have discussed about changing aganwadi bal batika and the beautiful thing about our education system which you have discussed about activity based learning we always get influenced by the foreign languages or foreign curriculum or their way of education but we forget what is not in our national education policy a lot of changes have been done a person a student instead of making him or her a book warm rather focusing on experimental learning four curricular activities that will just give a fascinating you know a great way of learning great way of enriching so thank you so much dr snekta you have really really proved what a mind blowing fantastic presentation with lot of golden knowledge nuggets once again thank you so much all right moving ahead in my journey you can say the knowledgeable impactful incredible journey of nep now i am taking a great privilege to invite dr rashmi tyagi on this forum for another impactful speech let me tell you about dr rashmi she also needs no introduction and she is a great icon in the education industry she is an educationist cbse master trainer navodya vidyalaya master trainer science communicator environmental activist and she is a doctorate in chemistry that's my favorite from iit roorkee masters in education from mumbai university trained as principal at iim bangalore and resource person naita colombo sri lanka 
and also a resource person of Oxford University Press. So Dr. Rashmi, please enlighten us, please enrich us with your great wisdom and the floor is all yours. Thank you very much. It is my proud privilege today that I'm sharing this screen with all of you. And I want to invite the beautiful audience for sharing of the ideas about education. And I want to thank Mr. Piyush Pandit who has organized such a wonderful educational meeting today. And I welcome all international invitees and the international audience who is there for us today. And uh, as all of you know, that Dr. Snigdha Kadam, she has talked so much in a comprehensive way about National Education Policy 2020. And it is the need of the hour. It was a paradigm shift. And it was a coincidence that the pandemic, it has brought overnight changes in education, not only in India, but all over the world. Because pandemic, it was a global phenomena. And due to that, many changes in education has come. And for India, I can say that blended teaching learning, it has come. And due to that, it has met with the digitalization of education. The people who could not handle the WhatsApp in the rural areas of India and the students who were told that please don't talk on mobile, don't handle the mobile, they had to use the mobile zone. So that way it was a paradigm shift all over the world. But the teachers, they have come up as the warriors and the education had never stopped all over the world. The students were getting the online instructions. The teachers have brought the schools to their homes. So that way, everything was okay. But as I told you in the beginning, that it was a coincidence that pandemic and the NEP 2020, they have come together. So whatever we thought that because of the pandemic, the things will not be good, but you know, due to the support of NEP 2020, it has helped the education system to sustain in the 21st century skills way. Because the 21st century means what? We are in 2022. So we cannot say that it is the start of the 21st century, but gradually we were trying to accept it, but we were not really accepted it because the traditional teaching learning methods, the lecture methods, and uh, you know the assessment method that was not aligned with the NEP, what NEP is telling, and not even aligned with the digitalization of the education. Therefore, now, because of these two things coming together, the education, educational transformation has taken place. And it is a welcome change, I should say, because it is the 21st decade. And we have got sustainable goals also, which we have to just you know, meet till 2030. And I want to thank Dr. Snigdha Kadam because she has given you an overall idea about NEP. So now I'm going to explain each and every point in a general way that what the teachers, they will be doing it because it is not yet implemented, but everybody has got an idea about NEP that what they are supposed to do. So first I will say that it is written everywhere that research, innovation and quality. These three things, they just uh, represent the NEP 2020. And the educational changes have taken place in such a way that the rote learning is out. What we were doing in the assessment, there was 
three hours subjective exams and whatever they could memorize, they were just doing it on their question paper and they were getting 100 person marks, 101 person marks, fine. But whether it is accept acceptable in educational industry, that we have to see. Because now the new things have come up. Whether IQ is more important or EQ is more important. IQ is intelligence quotient. EQ is emotional quotient. And you know, the life skills have also come into the educational arena. So now when our students, they go after engineering or maybe other degrees in the you know, global market, then the, what they are being asked that, okay, fine, your result card is saying 99% marks, but how about your emotional quotient? Suppose you are the CEO of an airline air, uh, company, and suppose the passengers are enjoying their journey from India to some destination. All of a sudden, the plane is hijacked. What will you do? So are we teaching our students these things that what is their emotional balance Will they be able to take the right decision at that time? And that there is Pythagoras theorem will help them. No. So that is why now our teaching learning as per in NEP 2020 is to be changed into this way that emotional quotient is more. And when we talk of 21st century, then there are four C's. That is the critical thinking and creative thinking collaboration and communication. So NEP is also impressing upon these four C's because right now I had given you one example of the global market. Actually, Washington Accord with, you know, Indian Accreditation Board, NABIT, it was just decided that you have to give your student not only this uh, kind of, a, you know, uh, intelligence quotient or good marks and whatever you know is curriculum but are you equipping them with the life skills are they having good social skills are they having good emotional balance and are they having collaborative skills the teamwork and all that so they are asking the students have you what have you done other than your studies so this is a fact of today which i am telling you and it's iits and IMs everywhere. Now they are giving these kinds of trainings, which is also asked in the NEP 2020, that life skills are important, as I have already told you, and collaborative skills are important. I told you the research is important. When we talk of research, we say it is only for the higher studies, but I will say that we can have research right from primary and then secondary, senior secondary, and then the you know, university level. And there, the students should be given the projects and they have to do the projects on their own. And they can talk about the Bloom's taxonomy. All the teachers, they know about Bloom's taxonomy. It is the pyramid in which we have got lots, lower order thinking skills, and we have got hots higher order thinking skills. So till now in our assessment, we were just doing the lower order lots thinking skills. This just remembering, describing and all that. So what is the use of remembering? And understanding is fine. Even the animals, the elephants, the dogs, the cats, they can also understand. But what is important is analysis, evaluation and at the top of the pyramid is creativity. So NEP is also talking of creativity. The students should be able to do something new. The market will be having those students at the top who can create something new, who can make a model of a new aircraft, maybe an automobile. They can plan new things. Are we teaching our students all these things? That is the question which NEP has understood and then they have told that we don't want the walking or the living libraries, that everything is, you know, just learned by the student by heart. No, we don't want that. We want the students who can take their own decisions. Suppose there are three ways, right, left, and straight, and you are 
in a forest. So which way you have to take? So that is important because if you'll take the wrong way, then it will not be good. So the evaluation or the judgment, the student, they should be able to take. So these are all 21st century skill. And then we have got the literacy also, the digital literacy. So information literacy, because these things are important globally. And also we should have the media literacy. So these L's are also there in the 21st century skills. And uh, the NEP is also talking about all these things that we should have coding, we should have robotics, we should have machine learning. And here I'm going to, you know, just uh, integrate the metaverse. Metaverse is a new term right now, but all over the world, the people know it that this, whatever we are having right now, it is the fourth revolution. And first, second and third revolution were, you know, finding the coal and making the electricity from the coal and all that. And today is the digital revolution. And this is fourth. And the fifth one, which is knocking at the door, it is going to be the new metaverse. That means the robotics and the machine learning digitalization means that suppose I'm teaching in my class, and Robert is also with me, Robert is working with me and the engineering students and the engineers who are working in their offices, then they are having the robots, they are also working with them. So when we are having lunch, the robots are just getting their batteries. So that way, you know, lots of metaverse is going to be there. And I'm so happy that we are having NEP where as Dr. Snigdha has pointed out that they have taken into consideration all these things. And there is one more thing, you know, it has become, the education has become liberal education. I have visited one university near Mumbai and it has become maybe the first or second liberal art university in India. And in that we had four years course of robotics. We had the course for arts, filmmaking, law, and all these. See, in our IIT, we were having the engineering courses like electronics, computers, civil, mechanical, and then we had, you know, mathematics, physics, and chemistry. But we were not having any course like arts, but now arts is being integrated and so much liberty to the students that if they are doing engineering, then they are doing the music also. And they can do the art also, graphic art also, because now can we predict that after 10 years, what is going to be the you know, demand of this, of this uh, professions, whether the you know, engineers will be doing the coding and all that, or automation will be there. Will the doctors be doing their surgery? Or then what else could be there? The robots will be doing the surgeries. So the professions will change. So what we were teaching our students in the last century or maybe 10, 15 years back. So will that be okay for the future? So that is important. That is why the idea of liberal university or idea of you know, having any subject combination that is being talked by the NEP and that is the need of the hour. And maybe by uh, you know, 2025, we will be able to start implementing what I'm telling to start implementing the NEP 2020. I'm very much, you know, with the education in India, in Maharashtra. So what I'm finding that still no changes except the blended learning are there. But now as you people have done this kind of uh, today's conference or uh, whatever webinar you are doing, so then they will understand more about it. And now the vocational courses. Till now the people who were passed out from IITs, from engineering colleges and uh, all these uh, places, they were getting the jobs. But now after, you know, or maybe in the 12th standard, some vocational skills are being taught and uh, the skills education has come into our educational system. And uh, day before yesterday, I've attended the life skill education program 
which is conducted by CBSE. And there I had come to know that many courses are being offered where the students will be learning the different types of skills and vocational courses from ninth standard onwards. So that after 12, if they want to just wait for one or two years to take up their next graduation or post-graduation courses, then they can work in that, uh, you know, with the life skill, they can get any profession, you know, they can work there also. So that is very important. And how the change, the transformation has taken place into the education, it is in such a way that we have to tell the student that what you have learned, see, we are teaching, teaching is not that important, okay. But what the child has learned, the learning is more important. So NEP 2020, it is giving this to learning of the student and that is called as competency. So once the student has passed out of 12th standard or maybe 10th standard, what he can do? So what vocation he can do? Whether he is good in music, whether he can paint, well, whether he can collaborate well and what he can do. So what is the ability of the child and the concept the teacher has to give to them. So that is important and that is what is outcome-based education. So outcome-based education is not only for the school schools, it is for the higher studies also. There also everybody is talking because I'm having some webinars with them in IITs, NITs, all over the world. It is happening that what is the outcome of the IIT bachelor's degree? Degree. What is the outcome of, uh, you know, IIT's uh, master's degree and all that? So it is not just a piece of certification that they have passed out because the world is going to change. And, you know, tomorrow we'll have loops in the air where the remote control trains will be running. It is not the rails on the ground and so many changes will take place. So why we should not transform our education like uh, through NEP 2020. And here they are taking care of the inclusive education, you know, multiple intelligence that we have got, you know, different types of intelligence in class. So then uh, we should have inclusive environment and uh, for the specially able children, and uh, you know, those children who are gifted, they are also, they have given some extra care at that. And it is first the activity based, you know, at the primary level. And then after that, it uh, changes into competency based and outcome based and then experiential learning. See, it is wonderful. The child, what he's learning from his experience, that is the most important thing. I just give a, a example, you know, in a classroom, the teacher asked one question, what does a bird eat? And one child answered, the bird eat the cow. And the teacher was shocked. What this child is talking about? Then she called the child, asked him, why you are saying that birds eat cow? Then he said, madam, through my window, I can see a dead cow and the peacock is eating the cow. The eagle is eating the cow. The vulture is eating the cow and the birds are eating the cow. So that's what I, he answered. And then whether the child is wrong or the teacher is wrong, only the teacher has to include that there are certain birds, you know, carnivorous birds. So they eat such things also. So the child, what he's learning from his experience. So experiential learning is very important and then multidisciplinary. That is most important at higher education and also in the school education. And at uh, higher education, we can say that we should have multitasking also. Because when you become a CEO of a big company, then you don't you only have to have the technology and all that. You have to have the people also. You should know the teamwork. You should know the emotional uh, how you, you can have an emotional balance. So multitasking is also very important. So that way, you know, we should teach the children in such a way that we can integrate the different subjects together. So suppose we are teaching the students the environment. So with the environment, they can integrate the science, they can integrate 
the language, they can integrate history, geography, arts, music, and maths. This is what we are doing. So this is not something which I'm talking that which is not happening, it is very much happening and it should happen at you know, higher studies also. And I've talked so much about the school level and NEP 2020, the assessment is going to change. We were having three hour subjective exams, you know, so these exams will not be there. And we will not say complete the syllabus or cover the syllabus. We'll say uncover the syllabus that you teach them the concept to the students. So uncovering the syllabus will be there and what the child will do on its own, as I told you, a creativity. The projects, the, we have to give lots of projects. And as Snigda talked about, CCE. And that is the you know, uh, comprehensive education. So in that, what the child was doing, that is important. So lots of projects, lots of assi assignments, lots of research aptitude and research attitude. Let the students start doing the research from the very beginning, because whatever is already given, you know, uh, just press a button away in the Google. So what is the use of just memorizing it? See, we should not ask the students that you just memorize the poem of a great poet. You write your own poem, you write your own stories, you write your own dramas like Shakespeare, and then you write your own dialogues. And then when you, if you're going to the entertainment in industry, then you should be able to make the music. You have to write the lyrics. And if you are a science student, engineering student, then you should be able to make the instruments, musical instruments. So that is important, whatever is given and you're writing that, that is not important. So that is the new NEP. And you know, there are so many things already Snigda has talked about. And let me know if the time is more with me or I have to just, you know, stop here. I've got more time. Just let me know. Oh, Ma'am, you can speak. <laughs> okay, <laughs> because the time is the most, uh, you know, important and uh, most powerful. And nobody can buy the time and nobody can catch the time. You have to run with the time, you know. And uh, then for higher education, you know, uh, there also will not have MPhil programs, you know, after masters, mostly people go for MPhil programs, but that will not be there. And every college will develop into a constitutional college as it is written here of a university or into an autonomous degree. And uh, it will be, you know, for medical courses because medical line is such that it is connected to the lives of the people. So there, they are not going to meddle much and uh, the credit system will be there. Already, uh, she has talked about the credit system. So that way we'll have the technical universities, the legal universities, the agricultural university. I got an opportunity to just present my paper in Indian Science Congress at Bangalore and Modi ji had inaugurated that uh, event and our children, you know, they have also just, uh, uh, you know, presented their papers in the Kishore Vaganik Sammelan, and they have done this uh, aquaponic and hydroponic. So when I am talking of aquaponic and hydroponic system, then I will tell you that the students should be given such kind of, you know projects which they can do on their own because agriculture sector is going to be one of the very you know great sector so uh, just an example i'm giving you you can have the hydroponic plants or the aquaponic plants in your homes and uh, that kind of things you have to teach to the students and then how can they make some recipes also lots of things are going on like that and uh, the uh, education should be holistic and the policy and the sage is broad based multidisciplinary. I've told you and vocational education. And here, you know, I will tell you how I'm doing the hydroponics at home. You can see this plant is bamboo plant, Chinese bamboo, and it is a hydro. You can see the beautiful roots here. So I've done it at home 
and I'm keeping it inside this, you know. So you can give these kinds of projects to the students, live projects, which they are doing on their own. So lots of research, you know, and uh, then lots of uh, such problems in the projects and assignments that some kind of skill is being developed in the students and uh, they can do something you know like inquiry based education and as uh, far as the I must say dr rashmi after uh, listening to you and i we are going to open the forum so i will say only one thing to you dr rashmi okay. after listening to you i am just remembering only one thing a teacher takes a hand opens a mind and touches a heart. That's what I have Actually, learned from you. Thank and you all. Thank you so much for imbibing us, for telling us about the 21st century skills. That's most important, which you said about robotics, artificial intelligence, and you did mention about metaverse. And the way you said about, describe how pandemic changes our full education system was really marvelous. When teachers used to say earlier, stay away from mobile but one day has arrived when we all whether you're a teacher mentor coach trainer whatever it is you have to be on virtual platform you have to leverage that knowledge through that so thank you so very much and thank would you. love to listen to you again Pleasure. okay Pleasure. well ladies and gentlemen we have arrived to our end but it is never an ending journey because learning is a continuous process that should move on and on and on and on. Now, I open this forum for an open discussion and let's be free. Let's not uh, juggle between our PPTs or any mm -hmm. other thing. I would like to ask both of uh, our guest speakers, what is your heartly opinion uh, the thing which you feel in your heart, from your heart, it should come about this today's topic. And for this, I would like to again call, it's my honor to call Dr. Snekta, and please enrich us, what do you exactly think about this topic from your own heart? Yes, Dr. Snekta. Yes, so uh, I think after the comprehensive discussion of nearly 60, 65 minutes, and uh, what I feel about NEP, is that it is well suited to strengthening our education system and transforming India into a global education hub. And I feel it's a time that the school leaders across the country embrace the digital aspect of learning and use it to optimize the in-class and at-home learning experience. NEP has been a truly forward-looking policy that addresses the need of a young nation with a strong aspiration. The national education policy is a guiding part to bring advancement in the learning landscape by making education holistic, further developing a solid foundation for the Atma Bharat, Atma Nirbhar Bharat mission. I would like to add on here, International Internship University has formulated its curriculum teaching methodology, early childhood education, vocational guidance, coding, digital education, and maybe all the aspects which are at par with NEP. Certainly, I can say IIU is the change, IIU brings the change, IIU is the revolution in the education. So let's join our hands together to have better implementation of NEP 2020 to provide quality, accessible, affordable, skill-based education with internship opportunities. Namaste. Superb, Dr. Snekta. And I really resonate with all your points over here. Whatever you said, it was 100, not 100, 200%. Uh, Dr. Rashmi Dagi, would you like to add something before I just uh, move for further process? Yes, sure. And uh, for that, uh, I will say that uh, this is uh, this has happened, and uh, it was just uh, the requirement of the changing times. And many philosophers and educationists 
those who have given so many theories about teaching learning, they have predicted these things. So whatever NEP has introduced today, it uh, was to come even before 10 years. But now it has come at the right time. And I just request all the educators, the teachers, and even the parents that they should help in transforming this education because it is going to be a great transformations because the assessment is going to change. The, you know, teaching learning is going to be changed and the project based and uh, learning by doing the experiential learning and also, you know, simulations and flipped classrooms. And uh, also with that, you know, digital things like augmented reality, the virtual reality, so they have to incorporate in their teaching learning and the schools, they should have an infrastructure to have the skill, the labs for skill based education, the labs for robotics and augmented reality and all that. And let us take the you know, students outside the classroom doors. So this is what I want to request everyone. And then in line with you know, NEP 2020, the whole education, educational system in India, right from pre-primary to the higher education, to the research education, it should be implemented in the real way. So all the best to everyone and please do it. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you so much, Dr. Rashmi. <laughs> Beautiful, wonderful and mind-blowing, I would say. Thank you to you. Yeah. Well. Ladies and gentlemen, every beginning has an end and every end has a new beginning. So once again, I thank you from the bottom core of my heart to Dr. Snegda and Dr. Rashmi for rendering such an insightful and impactful session today. And we all are imbibed with great knowledge. And when we are going from here, we are filled with energy, with a lot of education. And I must say, the golden nuggets of NEP, we have started today on our very first day. And also to our founder, Mr. Piyush Pandit sir and IIU for arranging this webinar series, which is going to be bang on. And of course, my IIU team members who are working day and night to make it a grand successful manner. So I invite everyone who is watching us today live, all my participants, all my lovely audience, do join us from 4th to 29th August at 7 p.m. This brilliant, wonderful NEP webinar series and keep enriching yourself with great, great knowledge. Till then, stay tuned, happy, hail and hearty. Namaste.